from Sabrina, who thought she could play with fire and paid the ultimate price, to La Catrina, who challenged the cartel and met a similar fate. What these women faced is what scholars might one day call a lesson in regret. Here are the female traffickers who dared to mess with El Mencho. Maria Guadalupe Lopez Esquivel, La Catrina. Maria Guadalupe Lopez Esquivel, widely known as La Catrina, was born in 1994 in Tepelcatepec, Michoacan. Growing up in a modest household, Maria's early life was shaped by poverty and limited opportunities. Her father was a rancher and her mother a homemaker, both struggling to provide for their family. From a young age, Maria exhibited a rebellious spirit, despising school and yearning for a life beyond the confines of her small town. In 2017, at the age of 23, Maria made a life-altering decision. She left home and became involved with the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, one of Mexico's most powerful and violent criminal organizations. Initially, her role within the cartel was minor. She started as an errand runner, performing small tasks and learning the ins and outs of the criminal underworld. However, Maria's ambition and determination to rise through the ranks quickly became evident. Her beauty and charm caught the attention of cartel leaders, and she began to earn their trust. Adopting the moniker La Catrina, a nod to the iconic Day of the Dead figure, Maria embraced her new identity as a formidable Sicaria, or hit woman. Her ruthless efficiency and willingness to do whatever was necessary to succeed earned her a fearsome reputation within the cartel. She quickly rose to power, leading a squad of hitmen responsible for assassinations, extortions, and kidnappings. Her beauty and seemingly innocent appearance masked a deadly ambition, making her one of the cartel's most dangerous and unpredictable enforcers. One of La Catrina's most infamous operations was the ambush of Mexican police in October. October 2017. Under her command, her squad executed a meticulously planned attack on a convoy of police officers in Aguililla, Michoacan. The ambush resulted in the deaths of 13 officers and the wounding of several others. The brutality of the attack shocked the nation and cemented La Catrina's status as a feared leader within the CJNG. The ambush emboldened the Mexican law enforcement, leading to a concerted effort to capture La Catrina and her squad. On January 10, 2020, authorities received a crucial tip-off that pinpointed her location to a safe house in Labaconda, Michoacan. A heavily armed task force, including elements of the National Guard and local police, surrounded the house and launched a high-stakes operation to capture the notorious hit woman. As the task force moved in, a fierce shootout erupted. La Catrina, realizing she was cornered, fought back with her squad in a desperate bid to escape. In the midst of the chaos, she was struck by a bullet in the neck. Despite her injuries, she was conscious when officers stormed the building and secured the area. Medical personnel were called in, and she was airlifted to a nearby hospital, but she succumbed to her injuries en route. At just 25 years old, La Catrina's life of crime and violence ended abruptly, marking the fall of one of the most feared figures in the CJ Ng. While La Catrina died young, the next female drug trafficker lived long enough to witness some deep personal tragedy. Sandra Avila Beltran, La Reina del Pacifico. Sandra Avila Beltran, famously known as Lorena del Pacifico, a.k.a. The Queen of the Pacific was born on October 16, 1960, into a family deeply entrenched in the Mexican drug trade. Her uncle, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, was a notorious drug lord and one of the founders of the Guadalajara cartel, often referred to as the godfather of Mexican drug trafficking. Growing up in this environment, Sandra was exposed to the inner workings of the drug trade from an early age. Her beauty and charm set her apart, but it was her intelligence intelligence and shrewdness that truly defined her path. Sandra married twice, both times to men who were high-ranking members of the Juarez cartel. Both of her husbands were eventually assassinated, which was not uncommon in the violent world of drug trafficking. Despite these personal tragedies, Sandra continued to rise within the ranks of the drug trade, leveraging her connections and knowledge to establish herself as a significant figure. Sandra was known for her ability to broker deals and navigate the treacherous world of drug trafficking with a level of sophistication that was rare. She played a crucial role in facilitating the transportation of cocaine from Colombia to Mexico and then into the United States, making her a key player in the narcotics trade between the Andean region and North America. Her operations were primarily based on the Pacific coast of Mexico, which earned her the nickname La Reina del Pacifico. Sandra's life was marked by luxury and extravagance. She lived in opulent homes, drove luxury cars, and was known for her taste in high fashion. Her lifestyle was a stark contrast to the brutal and often violent 
violent world of drug trafficking that she was a part of. She managed to maintain a relatively low profile for many years, despite her high-level involvement in the drug trade. However, her downfall began in 2002 when her son was kidnapped. After she paid a ransom for his release, law enforcement began investigating her activities, and in 2007, she was arrested in Mexico City. Her arrest was a significant event, as it marked the capture of one of the few women who had reached the upper echelons of the Mexican drug trade. Sandra was charged with drug trafficking and money laundering and was extradited to the United States in 2012. In the U.S., she pled guilty to charges of conspiring to distribute cocaine and was sentenced to time served plus five years of probation. After her return to Mexico, she was acquitted of most charges but was sentenced to additional time for money laundering. Joseline Alejandra Nino La Flaca Jocelyn Alejandra Nino, known as La Flaca, was a young woman born in Mexico who entered the perilous world of organized crime at a tender age. Her early life remains largely a mystery, but like many in regions dominated by cartel violence, she was likely drawn into the criminal underworld during her teenage years. The allure of quick money and the promise of power are potent lures, and for Jocelyn, the risk seemed worth the reward. With her slender frame and unassuming appearance, Jocelyn was a perfect recruit for the Gulf Cartel, an organization notorious for exploiting young women in various roles, from lookouts to foot soldiers. Her nickname, La Flaca, meaning the skinny one, not only referenced her build but also carried a darker connotation, linking her to Our Lady of Holy Death, a skeletal figure worshipped by many in the drug trade. This nickname foreshadowed the violent path she would walk. Jocelyn quickly rose through the ranks of the Gulf Cartel, becoming a foot soldier in the faction known as Los Ciclones. This subgroup was locked in a deadly turf war with the rival Los Metros faction. As a foot soldier, Jocelyn Jocelyn's duties included engaging in violent skirmishes to defend her cartel's territory, a task she performed with both bravery and ruthlessness. Her notoriety grew within the cartel, but it also made her a target. On January 5, 2015, an image of Jocelyn was leaked on the citizen journalist page Valor Por Tamaulipas, showing her smiling confidently while dressed in a bulletproof vest and holding a firearm. The photo went viral, bringing her out of the shadows and into the public eye, a symbol of the brutal reality of Mexico's drug war. However, this fame came at a terrible cost. On April 13, 2015, Jocelyn's dismembered body was found in an ice cooler in Matamoros, Tamaulipas, alongside two other mutilated victims. The horrific discovery shocked the nation and served as a grim reminder of the violence that pervades cartel life. Jocelyn had been tortured before her death, a brutal end that underscored the unforgiving nature of the world she had been a part of. Her murder was a message from Los Metros, a warning to their rivals in Los Ciclones, illustrating the deadly stakes of their ongoing ongoing conflict. Melissa Margarita Calderon Ojeda, La China. Melissa Margarita Calderon Ojeda, known as La China, was born in 1984 in La Paz, Baja, California, Sur. Her life began like many others in her community, but it soon took a dark turn that would see her rise to infamy as one of Mexico's most feared cartel leaders. At the age of 20, she met Eric Davalos von Borstel, a prominent figure within the cartel, who introduced her to the world of organized crime. Eric, who became both her mentor and great love, helped Melissa navigate the violence violent world of the cartels, allowing her to rise rapidly through the ranks. Melissa's ascent was swift and ruthless. Initially starting as a hit woman, her cold-blooded nature and strategic mind soon distinguished her from her peers. By her early 30s, she commanded a squad of 50 assassins and led the special forces of the Damaso Lopez Nunez faction, known as Las Fuerzas Especiales de los Damaso. Her leadership was marked by brutal efficiency, and she quickly established herself as a force to be reckoned with within the cartel world. However, the cartel life is fraught with danger and betrayal. When Eric was killed, allegedly strangled by a rival known as El Grande, Melissa was left with a deep emotional scar. Her grief turned to vengeance, and she refused to work under El Grande, instead forming her own faction with her new lover, Hector Pedro Camarena Gomez, known as El Chino. Together, they expanded their operations, turning Cabo San Lucas into a bloody battleground. Melissa's reign, however, was short-lived. Her brutal tactics and expanding influence attracted the attention of authorities and rival rival cartels alike. The first major blow came with the arrest of Hector, who, facing a lengthy prison sentence, betrayed Melissa by cooperating with the authorities. His testimony led to her capture at the Cabo San Lucas airport, ending her reign of terror. Melissa was imprisoned in a maximum security facility, her empire dismantled by the very man she had trusted most. Lucerene Fajardo Campos, La Madrina or La Comadre, 
Luz Irene Fajardo Campos, also known as La Comadre and La Madrina, was a formidable figure in the world of international drug trafficking. Born in Cosala, Sinaloa, in the heart of Mexico's Golden Triangle, Fajardo grew up surrounded by the narcotics trade. Though she initially trained as a lawyer, she ultimately followed a different path, becoming deeply involved in the logistics and management of a vast drug trafficking network that spanned Colombia, Panama, Ecuador, and Mexico. Fajardo's rise to power was marked by her intelligence and strategic strategic acumen, enabling her to oversee the transportation of cocaine from Colombia to Mexico and the importation of chemical precursors necessary for methamphetamine production. She was directly involved in coordinating flights from Honduras to Mexico, ensuring that her operations evaded the grasp of law enforcement, including the DEA. Her ability to navigate the complexities of the drug trade earned her respect and fear, both among her criminal associates and her enemies. However, her life took a devastating turn following her arrest in April 2017 at the International Airport in Bogota, Colombia. While she was extradited to the United States to face charges, her two sons, whose names remain undisclosed, became victims of a brutal act of retribution. In what many believe was a warning from the Sinaloa cartel, her sons were kidnapped, dismembered, and their bodies were burned in Hermosillo, Sonora. Their murders were a clear and horrifying message, likely intended to deter Fajardo from cooperating with U.S. authorities. The death of her children marked a profound and tragic moment in Fajardo's life. Despite the immense pressure and the unimaginable grief she faced, Fajardo chose to go to trial, pleading not guilty to the charges against her. Her decision to fight the accusations rather than cooperate with authorities was seen by some as a sacrifice, an attempt to protect her remaining family from further harm. Her defense attorney, Robert Fitel, described her situation as a Greek tragedy, underscoring the deep personal cost of her involvement in the drug trade. In July 2021, Fajardo was sentenced to 22 years in a U.S. prison, but the true punishment she faced was the loss of her children. Their brutal deaths cast a shadow over her life, illustrating the harsh and often lethal consequences of the violent world she was a part of. Fajardo's story is a stark reminder that even the most powerful figures in the drug trade are not immune to the devastating personal losses that come with such a dangerous life. Enadina Arellano Felix, La Jefa, Enadina Arellano Felix, known as La Jefa, the boss, is a formidable figure in the world of Mexican drug trafficking. Born on April 12, 1961 in Mazatlan, Sinaloa, she grew up in a family that would become infamous as the leaders of the Tijuana cartel. The Arellano Felix family, led by her brothers, was one of the most powerful and violent criminal organizations in Mexico during the late 1980s and 1990s. Enadina's upbringing was marked by the influence of her brothers, who were deeply involved in the drug trade. Despite the family's criminal activity, and Nadina pursued a different path in her early years. She studied accounting at a private university, where she honed the skills that would later prove invaluable to the family's operations. Her education and business acumen set her apart from her brothers, who were more focused on the violent enforcement side of the cartel. As the Tijuana cartel expanded its operations, and Nadina gradually became involved in the financial management of the organization. Her role was initially behind the scenes, where she managed the cartel's finances, laundered money, and coordinated drug shipments. Her intelligence and discretion made her a crucial asset, and she quickly gained the trust of her brothers, who relied on her to handle the complex financial aspects of the cartel's operations. And Adina's rise to power was not just a matter of familial loyalty, it was also a result of necessity. As law enforcement pressure intensified, and her brothers were either killed or captured, and Adina stepped into a leadership role. By the early 2000s, she had become the de facto head of the Tijuana cartel, earning the nickname La Jefa. Her leadership marked a shift in the cartel's operations. Unlike her brothers, who were known for their brutal violence, Enadina was more calculated and business-minded, focusing on stabilizing the cartel and expanding its influence through strategic alliances and diversification of criminal activities. Under her leadership, the Tijuana cartel shifted from a primarily violent organization to a more business-oriented entity. Enadina forged alliances with other cartels and criminal organizations, ensuring the cartel's survival in the increasingly competitive and dangerous drug trade landscape. She also diversified the cartel's operations beyond drug trafficking, involving the organization in money laundering, human trafficking, and other illicit activities. This shift helped the cartel maintain its power and influence, even as other organizations rose and fell. Enadina's ability to lead the cartel with a mix of pragmatism and strategic thinking earned her a reputation as one of the most powerful women in the world of organized crime. Despite her significant role, she managed to maintain a relatively low profile 
smile, avoiding the public spectacle that often accompanied the activities of her brothers. Her discretion and careful management of the cartel's affairs have allowed her to evade capture, even as other members of her family have been taken down by law enforcement. Sabrina Duran Sabrina Duran, a beauty influencer from Chile, became a sensation on TikTok, where she shared beauty tutorials, dance videos, and glimpses of her life. For about a year, she steadily built a small but loyal following, charming her audience with her content. However, Sabrina's seemingly ordinary life took a dark turn when she abruptly stopped posting, disappearing from social media without explanation. Three months later, Sabrina reappeared on TikTok, but this time her videos were being made from prison. The revelation of her incarceration shocked her followers, and the truth about her life emerged. Emerged. Sabrina Duran, who had become known as the Narco Queen, was not just a beauty influencer. She was also the leader of a small drug trafficking gang, which she ran alongside her brothers. While her gang wasn't the largest, they had connections to powerful cartels and were involved in violent territorial disputes with rival gangs in their neighborhood. The violence associated with Sabrina's gang, including frequent shootouts, was so intense that local residents began recording videos of the chaos. However, out of fear of retaliation, they didn't report these incidents to the police. The Chilean police, recognizing the severity of the situation, set up an anonymous tip line, which soon flooded with reports about Sabrina's gang. These reports caught the attention of the PDI Counter-Narcotics Division. After gathering enough evidence, the PDI launched a raid on all properties linked to Sabrina and her gang. During one of these raids, Sabrina was found in an apartment. When the police stormed the place SWAT-style, Sabrina attempted to escape by jumping out of a window, but she was eventually captured and sentenced to three years in prison. This marked the end of her brief hiatus from TikTok. Surprisingly, Sabrina continued posting videos from her prison cell where she met Antonella, another drug gang leader. The two women, sharing similar backgrounds, quickly bonded and fell in love. Despite being in prison, Sabrina's TikTok activity suggested she was still focused on her influencer persona, though her new content reflected her unusual circumstances. After serving less than a year, Sabrina was released early. She resumed her beauty content, but her past continued to haunt her. Six months after her release, Sabrina was ambushed by masked men while driving to a nail salon. She tried to escape, but they shot her multiple times in broad daylight, ensuring she wouldn't survive. The brutal attack was caught on camera, and the assailants used her car as a getaway vehicle, later abandoning and burning it. Authorities believe the murder was likely a score-settling act related to her past gang activities. Even in death, Sabrina Duran's story remained a stark reminder of the dangerous double life she led, a TikTok star who couldn't escape the violent world she was a part of. Guadalupe Leia Serrano. Guadalupe Leia Serrano's story is a harrowing example of the brutal and unforgiving world of the Mexican drug cartels. She was the wife of Hector Luis Palma Salazar, a high-ranking lieutenant in the Sinaloa cartel, one of the most powerful and dangerous criminal organizations in Mexico. Her life, however, took a tragic turn when she crossed paths with Enrique Rafael Clavel Moreno, a cold-blooded Venezuelan drug trafficker and trusted associate of Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, known as El Jefe de Jefes, the boss of bosses and leader of the Guadalajara cartel. Clavel Moreno was notorious for his ruthlessness, but he also possessed a charm that many women found irresistible. Guadalupe, Leia Serrano, like others before her, fell under his spell. The affair between Serrano and Clavel Moreno was not just a romantic entanglement, it was a calculated move by Clavel, who had been ordered to settle a score with Palma Salazar. Under the guise of love, he manipulated Serrano, convincing her to withdraw $7 million from her husband's account and leave her home with their two children, Natalie and Hector. Hector. Serrano, blinded by what she believed to be a new start with Clavel, followed his instructions, unaware of the horrific fate that awaited her and her children. Clavel had no intention of building a life with Serrano. Instead, he was executing a cruel and calculated plan. After seducing Serrano and making her believe in a future together, Clavel Moreno revealed his true intentions in the most gruesome manner. One night, after they had been intimate, Clavel Moreno murdered Serrano in cold blood. He decapitated her, sending her severed head to her husband, Palma Salazar. Salazar in a box as a macabre message. The horror did not end there. Clavel Moreno took Serrano's two young children to the Concordia Bridge, where he threw them to their deaths. To add to the unimaginable cruelty, he filmed the entire act and sent the tape along with Serrano's head to Palma Salazar. The next people on our list were known as one of the most feared women in Guatemala. But you know how it goes with anything cartel-related. It never ends well. Mayra Lemus and Marixa Lemus 
Marixa Limas, known as La Patrona, and her sister, Mara Limas, were two of Guatemala's most notorious figures in the world of organized crime. Born and raised in a country plagued by poverty and violence, the sisters were drawn into a life of crime early on, with Marixa emerging as the more prominent and feared leader. Marixa rose through the ranks of a powerful drug trafficking organization, earning a reputation for her ruthlessness and strategic acumen. She oversaw various illegal operations, including drug smuggling, money laundering, and violent enforcement of the cartel's rules. Her leadership and the fear she instilled in others made her a key player in the cartel, leading to her eventual notoriety throughout Central America. Mayra, although less prominent, played a significant role in supporting the cartel's operations, helping with logistics and the coordination of illegal activities. While she did not command the same level of fear and respect as Marixa, she was deeply involved in the criminal activities that defined their lives. The downfall of the Lima sisters began in 2013 when Marixa was arrested by Guatemalan authorities after years of evading capture. She was sentenced to a lengthy prison term for her involvement in numerous crimes, including murder and drug trafficking. Despite being incarcerated, Marixa managed to escape from a high-security prison in 2017, an event that caused a national scandal. However, her freedom was short-lived as she was recaptured just weeks later and returned to prison. Mayra's fate was less publicized, but her life was also marked by the constant threat of violence and legal repercussions due to her involvement in the criminal world. The lives of the Lima sisters were ultimately shaped by the dangerous and unforgiving world of organized crime. Kareem Lisbeth Karem Lisbeth. Yepes Ortiz's life ended in a brutal and tragic manner on what was meant to be her happiest day, her wedding day. Born into a notorious family, Karem was the sister of Jose Antonio El Maro Yepes Ortiz, the feared leader of the Santa Rosa de Lima cartel, one of Mexico's most dangerous criminal organizations. Growing up in the shadow of her brother's violent rise to power, Karem was deeply involved in the cartel's operations. She was reportedly responsible for managing the cartel's finances, a critical role that played her in the heart of the criminal enterprise. This connection made her a prime target for rival cartels, particularly the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJ Ang, which was engaged in a violent and ongoing turf war with her brother's organization. On the day of her wedding in the city of Celaya, Central Mexico, Karim was celebrating what should have been one of the most joyous moments of her life. The ceremony, held at the Our Lady of San Juan Church, was filled with family, friends, and loved ones. But the event turned into a nightmare when gunmen reported reportedly from the CJ Yang, stormed the church just as the ceremony was concluding. The attackers, identified by the initials on their bulletproof vests, unleashed a hail of bullets, targeting Karem at the altar. Amid the chaos, Karem was shot and killed in front of her horrified guests. Her new husband was kidnapped by the assailants, adding to the terror and grief that engulfed the scene. Outside the church, an 18-year-old motorcyclist was caught in the crossfire and killed, another innocent life lost to the violence that pervades the region. Karem's Murder was not just a personal tragedy. It was a calculated message from the CJ Yang to their rivals. The brutal nature of her death highlighted the extreme violence that defines Mexico's cartel wars, where even the most sacred events are not immune from bloodshed. Her death added to the grim tally of lives lost in the ongoing conflict between the Santa Rosa de Lima cartel and the CJ Yang. Adrian Meza Torres. Adriana Meza Torres is a figure who has recently come into the public eye due to her association with the infamous Sinaloa cartel. Known as the wife of Ovidio Guzman Lopez, alias El Raton, she is considered the new queen of the cartel, a title that carries significant weight in the world of organized crime. Ovidio is one of the sons of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the notorious Mexican drug lord whose life and crimes have captivated and terrorized the world. Adriana was born into the world of the cartel, being the daughter of Raul Meza Ontiveros, also known as LM6. Her father was one of El Chapo's most trusted lieutenants and served as the right-hand man to Javier Torres Felix, LJT. Her lineage alone would have ensured her a significant place within the cartel's hierarchy, but her marriage to Ovidio Guzman solidified her role as a key player within the Sinaloa cartel. Her father, LM6, was murdered in 2007 in Culiacan, Sinaloa, a turning point that thrust Adriana deeper into the criminal world. Despite the violent death of her father, 
murder and her brother, Raul Meza Torres Elmini VI, who was also murdered in 2010, Adriana has remained a prominent figure within the cartel. In recent years, Adriana has been under scrutiny from Mexican authorities, particularly the Financial Intelligence Unit, UIF, of the Ministry of Finance and Public Credit. The UIF froze her bank accounts in 2019, citing her alleged role as a front for the cartel's financial activities. The authorities accused her of being involved in money laundering for the Sinaloa cartel, particularly for Los Chapitos, the faction led by El Chapo's sons, including her husband Ovidio. Adriana has maintained that she is a farmer, echoing a defense once used by El Chapo himself. However, the UIF's investigation revealed that she had no tax returns and could not justify the substantial cash payments used for her travels abroad. This further fueled suspicions that she was engaging in simulated activities to legitimize the cartel's illegal businesses. The next person on our list is the wife of El Chapo himself. Emma Cornell Ispuro. Emma Cornell Ispuro was born on July 3, 1989, in San Francisco, California, into a family deeply connected to the drug trade. Her father, Inez Cornell Barreras, and her uncle Ignacio Nacho Coronel were prominent figures in the Sinaloa cartel, laying the groundwork for Emma's future involvement in the criminal world. Emma first gained public attention in 2007 when, at 18, she won the Coffee and Guava Festival beauty pageant in Canelas, Durango. During this event, she caught the eye of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the notorious leader of the Sinaloa cartel. Despite their significant age difference, Emma and El Chapo married later that year in a private ceremony attended by close family members and cartel associates. As El Chapo's wife, Emma lived a life of luxury, characterized by designer clothes, expensive jewelry, and international travel. However, her life was not without peril. She played a significant role in her husband's criminal operations, often acting as a messenger between El Chapo and his associates during his incarcerations. Her loyalty to El Chapo was unwavering even as he faced multiple arrests and dramatic escapes. Emma's involvement in the cartel became undeniable when she was arrested in February 2021 at Dulles International Airport. She was charged with conspiring to distribute drugs and aiding in El Chapo's 2015 prison escape. In November 2021, she pleaded guilty and was sentenced to three years in prison. That brings us to the end of this video. For more interesting videos like this, click on the cards on your screen.